Here's a handy theorem concerning the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a real matrix. If lambda is an eigenvalue of a real n by n matrix A with a corresponding eigenvector x, then the conjugate of that eigenvalue lambda is also an eigenvalue of A, and the conjugate of that eigenvector is a corresponding eigenvector. So, in short, we could say that eigenvalues and eigenvectors of real matrices occur in conjugate pairs. If we have a complex eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector, their conjugates are also eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the same matrix. And here's a quick proof. If we take the conjugate of a times x, well, a times x is just lambda times x because x is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda. And then the conjugate of that we know is the same as the product of their conjugates. So lambda conjugate times x bar conjugate. But then also, remember that A is a real matrix. So the conjugate of A times x we can also write as A conjugate x conjugate. But the conjugate of a real matrix A is just the real matrix A. Taking the conjugate of real numbers does not change them. So the conjugate of A times x is A times the conjugate of x bring these two things together because remember the left sides of these equations are the same and we have our result. So if lambda is an eigenvalue of a real matrix A with a corresponding eigenvector x, then A times the conjugate of x is the conjugate of lambda times the conjugate of x. And so by definition, the conjugate of x is an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue conjugate of lambda. Let's go through a quick example to see this result in action. We'll find the eigenvalues and bases for the eigenspaces of this real 2 by 2 matrix. We of course begin by finding the eigenvalues. So we take the determinant of lambda i minus a, which is this, and that leads to this characteristic polynomial. Factoring this is not going to work. We'll have to bust out the quadratic formula to find our complex eigenvalues. Applying the quadratic formula, we get that lambda equals 3 plus or minus 2i. So of course we see that the eigenvalues have occurred in a conjugate pair, which is not surprising just based on how the quadratic formula works, but we'll see the eigenvectors also work this way. We have two eigenvalues, 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. We'll begin by finding a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to 3 plus 2i. So we plug 3 plus 2i into this matrix, and then we're trying to find a basis for its null space. So we're going to try to solve this system. Now we could perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this system, but that would be a good bit of work. Everything's harder with complex numbers. Instead, we can use a much nicer shortcut. We have to remember that we already know this is an eigenvalue of the matrix. Hence, this system has to have non-trivial solutions, because there have to be eigenvectors corresponding to this eigenvalue. Since there have to be non-trivial solutions, if we performed Gauss-Jordan elimination, we would certainly get a row of zeros. We would have to for there to be non-trivial solutions. And no matter what steps we take to get that row of zeros, the constants would just still be zeros as well. So let's suppose we reduce the matrix in such a way to make the first row zero. Then we can just swap the two rows, that way the first entry we have is a nice real number, and then divide row 1 by negative 4 so that first entry becomes positive 1. And that gets us here, so we made row 1 all zeros, swapped the rows, and then divided by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1, and negative 4 plus 2i divided by negative 4 is positive 1 minus a half i. So then we have that x2 is a free variable, since there's no leading entry in column 2. Let's say x2 equals s. And then from row 1, we have that x1 equals negative s plus 1 half s i. And so this is a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue. And we know what the basis for the other eigenspace is going to look like. It's just going to be the conjugate of this vector here. So it would be negative 1 minus a half i and positive 1. And here's the work written out to verify. So the other eigenvalue is just the conjugate, 3 minus 2i. This is the matrix we get, and we can do the same thing as before. We know that there have to be non-trivial solutions, so we could zero out the first row, and then swap rows 1 and 2. 
and then divide by negative 4. That would make our new row 1 become positive 1 and 1 plus a half i. That gives us these solutions, which leads to this basis vector, the coefficients of s, negative 1, minus a half i, and 1. And again, notice that this vector is the conjugate of this other one. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors for real matrices occur in conjugate pairs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to the lecture notes used in the videos if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out. Lately, don't know what's what. Don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.